guys, thank you for joining us again. Once again, we have uh, Mike Mayhew here with us. Uh, we're going to look at his new his covers they chose this time, and at the same time, pick his brain on different things. Hopefully, you watched the last episode, and you got to see some of it. We are three comic money. We're on CBSI. Uh, great website. If you haven't checked out our content, it went, you'll get to see the write-ups of the books that we choose, and you'll also just get to uh, watch these interviews. Uh, you can catch it on YouTube or on the Tales from the Flipside channel as well. Uh, so, Peter, what are the, um, let's do the picking again. All right. Let me see if I can get these ready to go. All right. Share screen. <laughs> get this going. All right. So, All we right. got the cards again. Once again, guest always picks. So, oh, Mike, uh, go ahead. Uh, I picked uh, middle last time. Let me go with, I'll do the left. Okay. Number one. Mike, what you got? Mel Morello. Middle. Two. And I'll take the whatever that left. Three. <laughs> right. uh, you have the third card. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you won again. You get to go again. First <laughs> one. <laughs> Did you know these in advance? You must have known these in advance. <laughs> All right. So we got talking covers. So on the cover, there has to be a speech bubble of something or a thinking bubble is the way we interpreted this. So. Yeah. yeah. Which yes, is one so. of my favorite things that they never want to do anymore for some reason. And I, I love it when it's done well. It's just the greatest. I, I do have to say, I, I sort of despised you because I could not find any modern speech bubble covers outside of Scotty Young covers. Like, I couldn't find that many yeah. that are out there. It was and all like I had to go copyright and it. older. I assumed there had to be a lot of Deadpool ones, but I didn't find it. No. I, yeah. I would say as someone working in the industry, uh, I feel like they started to discourage those around like 2005 or so. And I think it was um, they wanted the work to be more reusable in mm. probably in different markets. Yes. And if they had to swap out the language, maybe or I don't know. Um, makes sense. But, you know, I, I remember that I, I, I got the impression like they were kind of frowned upon somewhat. Yeah, I think that this is not one I'm using, but this is probably like one of the most recent ones I could find. And it's like just one. They're not actually talking to each other, but she is talking. Yeah. Uh, so, and this is probably the most recent. I'm still, that's probably right. It's probably like 2005 or so when the, that was, that, that series came out for Teen Titans. Yeah. And I would also say that um, I would bet that the older ones are better where the hand lettering is done on the art because it's mm. more of a whole piece of artwork. Yep. You know, it, you can tell when the digital balloon slapped over, it just doesn't feel the same. I don't know. We'll, we'll see the ones that we, we have yeah. here, but you know, there's something about when it's designed, when the lettering is all designed, hand done together, it looks great. All right. So let's all right. see what your first pick is. This is first pick. This is the big boy. I guarantee I. Okay. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> okay, yeah, now that's kind of an obvious one. I, I mean, I think I was even surprised there was talking on that when I looked at it. But, you know, there you go. It doesn't get any better than that. I mean, everyone wants that book in their collection and, you know. Yeah, I, did, I didn't think of, you showed it. I was like, I didn't think there was talking bubbles on there. Yeah, no, there you go, right okay. there. And, I mean, there, that's everything about Spider-Man you need to know practically, too. I mean, what a great... I mean, uh, I don't know. Would you, do you think that cover would be better without the balloons? I don't know. Why don't we um, look at one of yours and find out? Um, oh, well, there we go. <laughs> 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 you, so, so, <laughs> so you you decided to homage that cover, obviously, but it's That's such right. a great and um, our last episode we talked about your X twenty or your X twenty three that Mike has up behind you there, and you see back here the oh, your the astonishing X Men homage that you did with the uh, X Men number four there. Oh uh, yeah! How many of these did you do? I, I believe I did thirteen Marvel Vampire covers, and it was—they uh, all came out in the month of October of uh, like 2010, I want to say. And um, I believe that there was was that vampires in the X Men. Uh, there was, I believe, Dracula was in the X. -Men. Yeah, it was Dracula called was Curse of the, the Mutants. Was the storyline? Yeah, and uh, I remember it not going so well. I think it was at, after some Twilight fatigue. <laughs> And people were kind of like, yeah, a vampire, <laughs> you know. But, man, it was great for me. I, and I also have to say it was probably one of the first times when I really did variant covers. And I, got, I started to think of variant covers a little differently. 
that really set me on the path to where I'm kind of at now. Um, yeah, I don't even, I honestly don't even know if I did a variant before those variant covers. These, when I think through, like, especially Spider-Man, but X-Men too, like, they, they were there blasted by these variants and the Venom variants that came out during this, that little 2010, 2011, that no one cared about. But now collectors go nuts yeah. trying to track them down. So yeah. People yeah. Are your vampire set. People try to complete that Venom set. I know Mike's gone crazy over the X-23. He's also gone crazy over the Venom variants, if you can ever find them. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's well, awesome. this I mean, this cover here, for those that couldn't remember where they've seen the most recent Mike Mayhew uh, all-new Wolverine pose, this is what the original yeah. one was. Uh, probably not a book a lot of people have seen in person. It's pretty rare, but... Um, uh, a, a good buddy of mine had this in his collection. He's a DC guy, and he goes, "Oh, that's a Marvel book. I don't need that. You want it? I'll trade you for it." So, um, so I was happy to get my hands on that. But, um, but yeah, that that whole run. I mean, I've I've never even seen them all in person. I've only think I think I've only run across maybe four or five of them total. Okay. They're definitely not around very often. But, uh, but I'm gonna take I'm gonna take your Amazing Fantasy 15, and I'm gonna uh, either raise you or see you okay. at Fantastic Four number one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it depends on what week you're looking at the prices, but they're about equal these days in in, in value. But man, this all the the dialogue on these these Silver Age, they just sum up what the Silver Age was like. It's sort of that campy kind of feel. It's like I can't turn invisible fast enough. How can we stop this creature, Torch? Just wait and see, sister. The Fantastic Four have only begun to fight. I mean, that's just the way the whole book reads. It's so yeah. cool. I mean, it's like the total package, you know, you don't even yeah. have to open the book. You got such a representation of it right there. Yep, exactly. And it's just, I mean, and that was the fun of these comics. I love going back and reading these. And I remember when I was collecting X-Men and I was, somebody asked me, are you actually reading those Silver Age X-Men? I'm like, hell yeah, I'm reading them. They're amazing. They're so much fun. <laughs> They're pure escapism. There's nothing you know, there's nothing really underlying for the most part, other than some, obviously some racist issues in the X-Men books, but yeah. You know, for the most part, they were just fun and action packed and a little campy and just kind of just pure right escape in there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, um, but yeah, I mean, when I thought dialogue, that was the first one that popped in my mind. I'm like, man, do I pull a, do I pull out a big gun today? I don't know, but I, I couldn't wow. think of another reason to use this book. So, that's a good pick. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for setting the stage <laughs> for those two books. <laughs> I'm gonna bring us back down a little bit. <laughs> Take it to the '90s with a little bit of a favorite of mine, a little George Perez action here. Oh, with yeah, fans yeah. going, so come and get me. I remember that cover, man. That that made an impact. I this I just love this run. That the uh, that era with the Silver Surfer is what got me really into collecting comics. Because uh, my dad had books before me, but. Uh, I didn't really care as much until this and Jim Lee X Men. Like those two things really sucked me in. So this era is uh, holds a special place, you know, in my heart. Yeah. Very nice. So I'm going to take it even down a further notch than <laughs> than you did, there, Peter, <laughs> and break out what the. I mean, oh, the oh. title of it alone is a speech bubble. <laughs> <laughs> and then I mean, forget it, bub. We're on our break. Union rules, don't you know? It's Don Chu, no. Uh, and then, yeah, I think but just this is just such a fun. You see them in dollar bins all the time now. Uh, I think there's a great uh, Wolver uh, like Wolverine's Daughter issue or something in this. Yeah, Wild uh, Thing. Wild Thing. Uh, uh, yep. But they're just fun covers. Uh, I don't know. I, when I thought of talking covers, I was like, there's some great. Just Arg was one, Crazy. Some of those had some great talking bubble covers or whatever. But What the is what I wanted to go with strictly because of <laughs> It's 90s. It's so much my favorite characters. I mean, Wolverine, Spider-Man, Hulk. You can't go wrong. Punisher's hiding in the background. You're talking how many, how many 90s covers. That this, these were all the popular characters on one cover. So definitely yeah. dig it. Interesting choice. It's a fun pick, man. <laughs> all right. I guess we'll keep going with uh, round two. And, Mike, your next pick. Oh, okay. Oh. Now, that, now, that was probably the inspiration for sort of the – what the sort of you know motif but yeah harvey kurtzman i mean that that's going to be funny a hundred years from now you know what <laughs> I mean? 
it's like, and, and that to me, honestly, is maybe one of the greatest covers of all time. I, I don't know, man. There's something so subversive and, and interesting. And I don't know. I just, I, I'm such a huge fan of the first, I don't know, 20 odd issues of, of Mad. Um, I, I, you know, I read that stuff to my kids and I, 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 I fantasize about being as good as the guys that worked on that book. I mean, they were just, you know, complete unbridled talent that, you know, the world had never seen. I mean, I mean, you can't think about Mad Saturday Night Live or National Lampoon without knowing Mad came before it and, and laid the groundwork for it. Very yeah. true. Yeah, I love I love those, those especially those first those first like ten or so issues are amazing. I think I chose number eight a couple of weeks ago for our redheads issue. There's that just like surprise redhead up against the the wall and just it's a headlights cover. It's totally ridiculous, completely over the top, but they're so fun and so bright and they pop. They're just great covers. I love them. Uh, Mike, have you ever done any like comedy covers or sort of that on the Mad Vein or the What the Vein? Um. Well, I guess so. Yeah. I mean, my, my secret uh, desire is that I was Jack Davis and I've done a couple pieces in that style. Like it's, there's a Stan Lee piece I have where he's like Shakespeare and that gorilla. Oh, the Deadpool. Thing is that the Deadpool uh, one? Well, that was a Deadpool cover where he was like Shakespeare, but I did a Stan Lee, more of a caricature where he's hmm. holding a Spider-Man head. And oh. um, that last time we talked in the gorilla one about a creator own book I had, and I'm kind of toying with, and that would probably be done more of a Mad Magazine style, more cartoony. Um, and, you know, it's just, uh, I, I just really adore that type of work. But, you know, I, I'm, it takes a long time to develop that craft. And I just, I've never really spent the time I probably should, but it's a secret yearning of mine for sure. Yeah, and that's really cool when an artist can do more than one style like that, to do something completely different than what they're known for and really just yeah. dive into yeah. another yeah. I mean, if you guys can wait a second, I'll grab that gorilla thing real quick. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, please. Please do. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, uh, I, I optioned this thing around Hollywood for a while and, uh, and you know, never really made any money off of it, but uh, I don't know if you can see him right here. Yeah, I'll make it nice. Yeah. 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 He's kind of like a, a detective <laughs> uh, in, in like LA. <laughs> You know, he's he's like not a not the greatest guy in the world, but like the world around him is even worse. And uh, awesome. here's an, another version of him. Uh, <laughs> I like it. Yeah, we used to bring we used to bring these into the pitch meetings, so you can kind of see it's got a little more of a cartoony kind of look. Mm -hmm. And some of the other characters were like that. So um, yeah, I, I would love to do my Mad Magazine, um, you know, homage at some point. Yeah, the first one has got a Lebowski feel to me. Yeah. Like the oh, yeah. The yeah, yeah, in the bunny slippers, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's or awesome. Like, uh, the long goodbye, you know that Elliot Gould movie, yeah, mm -hmm. very much like that. Jim Rockford, you know that type of guy. I I, I love all that old detective stuff, the old yeah. Bogart movies, the Raymond Chandler, yeah, yeah. Or, or a little Repo Man in there too. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, when might we get to see uh get to see that character in in real action on the stands? You know, that will be a while because I already I got another creator on thing lined up. We I kind of showed you guys this before. This is a little thing I had a uh, I had this 3D there, printer. I don't know if I got it straight there. Oh man. This is for a, a character that I'm actually gonna be shooting some pictures for this week. And I've I've got a script from a a, a a Marvel writer and it's an idea I've had for a while and we both were talking about it and we're gonna try and, and get it off the ground somehow, maybe Kickstarter, maybe image. But I've got about um, 12 pages I'm going to draw here, and I'm real excited for it. Couldn't be more excited. Nice. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that, the, the Japanese style, like that uh, samurai mask. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Wait till you see the whole rest of him. It's it's gonna, It's gonna. a very – I think it's a very um, unique sort of character design. Cool. Thank that you. looks really cool. Thank you. Yeah, this 3D printing is insane. I mean, I predict <laughs> the next – few years i'll have covers that will also be statues oh sure. yeah that'd be pretty yeah. sweet where you can just just yeah. draw it and then throw it in the computer and then boom here's here's my x23 statue. oh man please do this one please yeah. do this one. <laughs> actually i take that back please do this one 
<laughs> life that's size? Where you, no. <laughs> that's where you can truly get the extra dimensional vampire on one side coming out the mirror on one side and then both sides of it. <laughs> oh, that would be really cool, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's like, see, you're joking. Mm. I'm not joking. I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're on book two. All right. Yeah. yeah. So as soon as I saw this, uh, as soon as I saw this category, the first book that popped into my mind because I always thought it was the funniest dialogue on a book like this is this Detective Three Seventy One, uh, Carmine Infantino cover. It's hilarious. Batgirl, get over here. Help us. We've got a problem. I have a bigger one. I have a run in my tights. <laughs> just just a ridiculous cover oh. i always thought it was hilarious i don't know why um just it's a great cover also it's a it's a really great, that, that, that's really great. Fourth? uh yeah it's like her third or fourth her appearance yeah, pretty is, her thigh skin is showing there is that right yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> very risque for 1968 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, just a just a just a great cover, one of my favorites. Um, I've had it and sold it a couple of times for some reason. Every time I sell it, I regret it, so I always get it back. <laughs> nice, interesting. Oh, that means I'm up. All right. Well, I go. You guys have these like conversational kind of covers. It's like a bunch of things going on. I'm going more with these one shot uh, one shot deals. Come and get me. It's probably the longest one that I have because the next one I got <laughs> is just oh. Next. Oh, there you go, yeah. So I went with the Hughes. I think this is a one in ten. That's cool. But uh, I, yeah, it's just a great image. I, I just love she's cracking her knuckles, blood spatter behind her like she just got done wrecking shop. Yeah. <laughs> All those think, Hughes variants from that time is, are hard to find. I think the key yeah. with the talking covers is um, like one you just showed. Would that be a better cover without the word balloon? Definitely not, right? No, you need that. Like it, it, you it can gives you the story. that to put it in context. Yep. So yeah, it's a really great use of it. All right. Well, Mike, I'm sort of going along your vein, uh, Morello. That is, uh, going with our <laughs> second appearance. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, if you can't read the speech bubble there, it says, "I love the I love Robbins." It says, "Batman, don't her life and yours won't we won't won't be worth a plug nickel." <laughs> the underworld <laughs> knows she has that information. <laughs> I mean, the innocence of the 60s when they're doing these covers, like, I mean, think today, uh, having a girl in a cave by two two men blindfolded and he's taking off his hood. I mean, yeah. now, right. like, this is such a great cover. I mean, I, I love this thing. Uh, this is not this one's not in great condition, but it's so funny. I, the fact he says plug nickel. I mean, I'm just I'm so happy by that. I mean, it makes me think of the Burt, uh, was it Adam West and Burt Ward? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Holy plug nickels, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. but again, it just it sums up that whole time frame, though, doesn't it? Because oh, yeah. you know what the inside's going to be when you when you open that up. There's no very, no mystery. Very very true. Ready for book number three? Let's see what we got here. Boom. Oh. Oh yeah. John Stewart. Now, now uh, so this is my uh, third pick. I'm glad you guys showed those other two DC because like you're talking about how they had a sense of whimsy and innocence. There's something about, um, I forget this black Green Lantern's name. Uh, John Stewart. John Stewart. There's something about the way he's addressing the audience that feels so real and like authentic to what was happening in the time then. You know what I mean? And it, it really like grabs you by your shirt and kind of shakes you like, Hey, this isn't about you know capes and fun. This is really stuff that's yeah. happened to people, you know. And uh, that just set the tone for that whole storyline. And uh, you, you know, one of my favorite issues of a comic ever by far. But um, you know, just the drama of, of the poses and and the power of his words. You know, just uh, it, it, there's nothing funny about what he's saying there. You know what no. I mean? It's, it's like serious as a heart attack, but it's so great. <laughs> Well, in the Green Lantern run, it's like a dis definitive when they change styles to the Neil Adams stuff. It's like, oh my goodness! It's like Green Lantern and Green Arrow is, is awesome now. Before then, it was just sort of campy, yeah. and yeah. like they took over, and it was a drastic change. Like a Batman, you, you sort of saw it coming because Cardi was changing it up, and Infantino was changing right. it a little bit. But with Green Green Air Lantern, it was just drastic. Yeah, very very true, and. 
Mike, what you got, Morello? Well, we're we're obviously on a lot on the same page this week because I went with a similar cover, uh, which uh, of course is the famous drug. Okay. <laughs> uh, also, Neil Adams, yeah. uh, uh, and again, sort of the same kind of idea that there's there's really nothing happy about this cover. There's nothing really funny or campy about about the fact that we've you know we've got a junkie on the cover. It's really a controversial cover. It's famous for its sort of drug depiction right on the cover. I think everyone probably knows what this book is, but that's the one I went with. And that's Speedy, right? Is yeah, it's Speedy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. so it's Green Arrow's sidekick, who's the heroin addict. Yeah, and it says literally, my ward is a junkie right on the, right on the, <laughs> right, right there. Wow. And what a great run. Again, it, that's a, that's a type of material I'll revisit every year or so, at least, just to remember how great it was. It still, it still holds up. Yeah, it does. That whole run. All right, well. My last one takes us away from the seriousness of those last couple of books. <laughs> <laughs> and this is probably an unnecessary uh, comment bubble, I guess you would say, on this cover. But for the last one, I went with a meow with a... Oh, oh yeah. All right. So the meow doesn't need to be there. It doesn't really add much. But... It looks good, though. Yeah, yeah, but it's definitely. And I wanted to use this book for a while now. It gave me an excuse. There you go. And <laughs> everyone loves Campbell. It, the, well, and that's one of the most amazing books to me because the book itself is not significant. It's all about the cover. Yes. Like, and the, once again, we're talking about in those 600s for Amazing Spider Man is when the covers almost became, became more important sometimes than what happens in the inside. Yeah. Uh, before then, it did matter what was happening. But Somehow, and the 606 and 607 for the Spider-Man run, Batman, shoot, uh, 881, or 880, I mean. 880, I mean, it's yeah. the cover. No one cares. The Snyder doesn't change anything with that issue, but that jock cover is a $250 cover. I mean, it, it amazes me sometimes, but it's right in this time period where people started going crazy. I don't think the – if we go back to 60s and 70s, covers don't do that. Like, I mean, there can be amazing covers, but there still has to be something inside the book that matters. I can't think of one names. Well, I don't know what happens in Batman, what, 251? Yeah, that Joker cover. I mean, I'm sure it's its Joker story, but it really yeah, is that sure. Adams I guess cover. It was, it was, uh, I think it was the first issue that Neil Adams did. Because I, 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 I did a, I did a uh, version of that for um, Batman Who Laughs. And I'm pretty sure right. that 251 cover was uh, Neil Adams. It was either Neil Adams' first Batman issue or the the return of the Joker who had been gone for a while. Yeah. I think it actually is Neil's last Batman cover, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. I don't know. But I remember but, it was a return of Joker because I did a lot of research about that uh, when I did that Joker Harley criminal sanity book. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I dude. think there'd been a break. I think there'd been like a, a gap there for, I don't know how long, but yeah, I believe you're right. Yeah. Where they, this was a, that 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 book was uh, memorable for the return of him being more of malicious and evil, like a like a serial killer, whereas before he was treated more of as a buffoon, or you know, like a clownish guy. Right. Well, and since you just mentioned those those uh, Harley uh, criminal books, those uh, things are gorgeous. I mean, those oh, black you. label things. That I've I've flipped through those. I'm like, oh my god, they're just the cover itself. I think it's a cover issue too, where the kid has the mask on, staring in the mirror. Yeah. I mean, oh, I I did when I was doing research or whatever, going, hey, maybe he's going to be on with us. What are some of his books? I was like, really? I have a stack over here. I didn't realize I had these um, of covers, and that was some of the books that I had. I was like, oh, I, I buy these because the covers are just amazing. Um, well, the oversize helps. It, oh it yeah, helps get a larger you know image of the art. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it, an interesting format. And I think you took advantage of it with those covers, like. I don't know if it would have been done justice on a regular size cover because you get this square look. It look, looks like you'd be hung in a mirror, in a picture frame. So, yeah, there's something about the proportion. It's it's odd. I, I uh, it's difficult working in that size after you've worked in eleven by seventeen and comic book size. You'd be amazed at what a few inches here or there throws off everything with how you print things and what paper size. And so it's to me, it's it was a challenge working at that size. But there's a lot of potential. I mean, I was always a big fan of Warren magazines and heavy metal and Epic magazine. Oh, yeah. So I love magazine size. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna finish this up. 
Now this oh, is a yeah. book up. Last pick. <laughs> <laughs> we I about am it. super excited to finally have a reason to show this. Uh, I wish so. I wish John Z was on because it's a romance book. Uh, but this is a <laughs> this is a Kirby cover. Uh, you get a speech bubble once again. The, just the cheesy cheesiness of the time. He's her thought is he's the only man I've ever loved, ever wanted, and the only man I can never have. I mean, just straight cheese. But the reason I really like this book is this black dot. Uh, I did an article and uh, for the site. Uh, this Marvel was changing the prices, and uh, there were ten cents. But midway through printing these books, they decided no, we were gonna make them twelve cents. So instead of the printer like reprinting them, they just they sent them back through and put had black ink and just put black ink on dots and then made them twelve cents. Uh, it didn't happen oh. to every book. Um, not all of them had it done. It was only one particular printer, like the first run that ran through before they ran the rest of them. So it happened to like f- four books total or three books total: Love and Romances, Journey into Mystery, and a uh, Gun Smoke Gun what Gun Smoke Westerns or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I was excited to track one of these down because I, I like the really obscure stupid variants that no one cares about um, yeah but it's it's a cool cover and then to, to make it a kirby cover makes it even better like i mean just to have something they did he did some of the a lot of the romance books back through this time period uh him and baker did a bunch of them so that's cool so uh once again mike thank you uh we're gonna have what we're gonna have a part three we, I know uh, when this show's going to air, you, you're about to go and do some signings. That's uh, right. So let's talk about some of the, the awesomeness of the signing that you have coming up. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, with everything shut down, um, everyone knows CGC is doing these private signings. I'm fortunate to be involved. I'll be going to Sarasota. I'll be there on the 9th and the 10th, which is when they're kicking off this long weekend of uh, signings. And uh, at the same time, Comic Online is going to be broadcasting, uh, live streaming, um, coinciding with that. Uh, and, you know, those are the guys from the, the Facebook group Creators Corner. And, um, yeah, it should be great. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm really excited. I, I, think, I, I love CGC. I love working with those people. And I saw some of the content like they did with Donnie Cates and Ryan Stegman and you know, I mean, uh, I don't know how you guys have been during this whole quarantine thing, but I found myself sitting down on the couch after dinner and I'll look on my phone on Facebook and I'll come on one of these live streams and I'll end up watching it for 20 minutes just, just to get a fix of like he's talking about it a con at one moment. Uh, yeah, I mean, so yeah, I'll be doing the signing, and uh, I'll be doing some remarks there. So oh, yeah. here's some remarks. There we go. We love. Uh, and then uh, the the deadline, the deadline is probably cut off by the time this airs. But, yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, yeah, I can't I can't wait to sign the books, and uh, I think they're gonna call some folks, and we'll be live chatting. We'll be you know sh- sh- showing video of me doing the remarks. We're just going to be having a good time. So, would you actually say, "Hey, I'm signing John Doe's book right now"? Or <laughs> something like that? You know, I, I saw Donny Cates, and they Facetimed a guy, and they like turned the phone so you could see his face, and he was talking to Donny, and you know, it was like the guy was standing at the table talking to talking to Donny about Venom. <laughs> so, as an artist, you're, like, do you? I know you go to the cons and you do some of the the signings and all those things. Is that something yeah. that you've been missing out on? Is this uh, like? That Um, that chance to talk to your fans. (laughs) Yeah, it's something I've been missing out on big time. I mean, it's a big part of my income. Yeah. Um, You know, that's why you do these variants is to take them to shows and sell them. Um, That being said, I have found uh, good fortune and and great experiences doing this live stream thing with folks like Black Flag Comics. I did one with Comic Online, Comic Art Live. And I don't know, man, it's a really neat opportunity. I want to develop it more. Um, because there is something about being in the comfort of your own home and still having this experience. And maybe there are even ways to enhance this experience where you can get more out of it than you would at a show. I'm, I'm not quite sure, but uh, I see a lot of potential. And I, yeah. I'm, I'm confident things will get back to normal some someday in the mm-hmm. next year or something. Uh, be nice. So, mm-hmm. You know, when it does, I think there will be remnants of this time, like these live streams that will still hold over and be regular parts of my business. I know for myself, yeah. like 
here I'm comfortable talking to you. Um, if I was standing in line for 30 minutes <laughs> or five hours to, to talk to you, yeah. I'm not comfortable because I'm going, there's 20 people behind me to where yeah. I can shoot yeah, yeah. and ask you a question. But here online, I love that. And like, what I, I like to feel is like when you're doing something like this and you're t- having someone else, if Mike Mar- Morello might be asking you, Peter will ask you a question. It's sort of a cool experience going, I wanted to hear what you had to say about that book. I wanted yeah. to find out how many vampire variants, but I forgot when I was in line. Oh my God. And then, <laughs> yeah. it's, and then it's so it's nice. Like, you know, they, they kick on the comments and you see, oh, hey, there's so-and-so. And it's all these people that you know from different shows. They might not have all been at the same show, but you're all together in that 20 minutes. You yeah. Know, it, it's a, it, there's value there. There's something cool about it. Yeah. Well, plus it's, it's also nice too, because it's, it's kind of on the creator schedule. You know, we, we try to find a time that's good, say for you in in this particular case so that you're comfortable too. And it's not like you're continually getting bombarded all, not that you don't like your fans. It's not what I mean, but you know, once you're talking about an eight hour, uh, eight hour con on day three, you're like, man, I'm a little shot, you know, (laughs) my remark, come on, hurry up, hurry up. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I know, like, with the CGC thing, I know a lot of people are saying, you know, it's nice not to have to stand in the lines, you know. Mm. Uh, I mean, you're, you're going to wait for it in the mail anyhow. So, uh, you know, I, I, I think there will be a place for cons in the future, but it's just like working from home. Everyone's kind of rethinking, you know, what's efficient, what what do I prioritize, and, and uh, there's some new opportunities out there. Absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for being on with us this, yeah, this time. We got one more to go. Uh, okay, let's do it. <laughs> but thank you, guys. Guys, hopefully you'll check out next week again. Uh, check us out. Uh, hopefully you saw the first one. This is part two. Hopefully you get to see part three. Three Comic Money. Always go to comicbookinvest.com to check out all this different stuff we have going. Um, and just uh, check us out next week for the final of our three-parter with uh, Mike Mayhew. So, Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks. And as always, uh, everything at CBSI is awesome, uh, but it's it's also we can't do this without some of the people that help us out. Comic Barricade, if you haven't seen, use these things. These are beautiful little plastic things that help your box from the books falling over and bending and doing different things. They sort of just help stabilize your box. Uh, great thing is people from CBSI help make these things because we are collectors. We know what matters. Peter here is showing you one of these things. You just slide it in and it helps hold your books yeah, in place. Pop it right in the box. This thing is, this thing's 30. Yeah. So reach out, comic book, comicbarricade.com. Thank you guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks.